In this video, we learn how to create a revival flyer like this in Photoshop. And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button. If you're old here, thank you so much for coming back again. So here are the resources that I'm going to use. I'll link them in the description if you want to download any photo suit. Now let's get into Photoshop. Now to make this tutorial very simple, I've provided the test that I'll be using over here. So where there is an involvement in test, I'll be kind of fast forwarding or I'll just copy and paste them right from here. Now the first thing that you do is you go to file and then you go to new and then you select the paper type that you're going to use. So in this case, you go for international paper and then A3. And then you can go ahead and then you click OK. And you have a paper like this. So basically, we are just using A3 to create this particular flyer or poster. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with the background creation. And then we're going to divide our paper into sections. So you go to view and then new guide. And then at the horizontal, I'm going to set this to 40%. And then I'll go to view again and then new guide and then I'll set the vertical to 50%. So basically the vertical is dividing it into just two. So we have this and you see the relevance of these particular guides that we've set pretty soon. So first off, I'll go to my resources over here and then I'm going to bring in my first background. So I'll drag and drop it inside of Photoshop. And then I'll hold shift and then alt, unless otherwise you're using Photoshop 2019 or 2020. So I just do it like that, like this. And then I'll right click and then rasterize the layer. So I'll go to filter and then blur and Gaussian blur. And then I'll blur it up a little bit like this. So I'll click OK. So I'm using 74.9. And then I'll click OK. And then it blurs out for me. Next off, I'll go to my resources again. And then I'm going to bring in this particular beautiful mountain wallpaper. So I'll drag it inside of Photoshop again. And then I'll drag it on top of this one. Double click on it to fill it. So you can see that this one is already filled. It is already in size with the shape or the size of the document that we're using. So you just right click and rasterize. And then you go to the blending mode and then you set this to soft light so basically you just create this sort of mountain illusions in the background and that is all that we need from this one okay so next of i'll go to the resources again and then i'm going to bring this hands lifted up in the air inside of photoshop so we are still establishing the background so i'll position this on top over here like that and drag it somewhere around here so I'll double click on it when I'm done and then I'll right click, rasterize, go to the blending option and set this to soft light. So I have this and then I'll decrease the opacity to about 30, 35%. Anyhow, but it depends on the kind of backgrounds that you decide to blend. You might have to maintain your opacity or drop it way below this 35. So next up, I'm going to draw a rectangle over here. And then I'm going to draw the rectangle around this side. So I'm using this particular color. It is a very dark brown or something like that. Very dark one. So you click OK and then you can push it up a little bit like this. So these are the reasons, the main reasons why basically I set these guidelines. So it is going to guide it over here. So I make sure that this one is at the very edge of it like that. And then I'll right click on the rectangle layer and go to rasterize layer. So basically when it is rasterized, it gives you the opportunity to apply tools like the polygonal lasso tool, the lasso tool and any other cutting tool on the rectangle. Mind you, when it is not rasterized, you cannot do anything of that sort to the rectangle. So I select my polygonal lasso tool. I hold Z and then zoom in. So I'll make a selection from here, this side. And then I'll bring it over here. So it depends on where you want to cut to. 
So I'll just bring it over here. So you see the reason why we created those basic guidelines. So I can push it up on top a little bit. It depends on where you decide to leave it. And then you left click and then you come over here like that. So you left click and then you can come back to the initial point. And there you have it. You have a selection made. You hit on delete and then it creates that delete for you. So basically this is what I'm having. It, it looks good for me. You can do it bigger. You can make it very bigger. It depends on where you decide to create the selection. So once we're done with this, I'll go back to my resources again and bring this beautiful background HG wallpaper and then I'll position it inside of Photoshop or I'll place it either way you want to call it. And then I'll make sure that it is around this place so I can increase the size over here like that. Double click on it and then I right click and rasterize. Set a blending option to soft light like that. And this is going to be way some way very darker over here but then as we go ahead and then we add a couple of stuffs to it it is going to look good over this so i'm going to add a layer max to it and then select my brush to make sure that it is big enough like this and then the hardness is zero percent and then i'm going to brush off these areas of this particular layer that i don't want so i'm just going to brush them off like that till it is left with this particular side so i can also do justice to the very edges of this one so that it wouldn't look that very solid like that so just brush it off a little bit like that so that it wouldn't look that much solid like that so once all these are done these are going to comprise of the background so you can just group them and then you give it a name like background so that in case you need anything from here it just comes straight into the background next off i'm going to position my pictures over here so you can see that i have four images right over here it depends on the number of images that you are using and in case you want to know how to remove backgrounds because i get a lot of that request in the last two previous videos i discussed how to remove the background i suggest you go and watch that in case you don't know how to get rid of backgrounds so I'll link it up in the card over there and in the description as well. So the first picture that I'm going to bring over here is a picture of the president. So he will be in the middle. So I'll bring it over here and then position it right here. Right. So the person will be just at this side. And then I'm going to right click and rasterize the layer. I'm going to add a layer max to it. Or I'm going to add a layer max to the picture and then I'm going to brush off this particular area. So I'll press Ctrl T again to transform and then I'm going to make him a little bit smaller like that. So I can just drag him up over here and still brush off some more because I'll be adding a couple of pictures or a couple of other people to him. I need not make him that very big because he's already big you know so i'm just going to press ctrl t again and then try to transform him to be a little bit smaller again next off i'll bring in the next person over here that is the pastor invited so he is going to be at the right side of the president like that okay so i'm going to right click and rasterize this layer as well and i'm going to transform it him up also to be a little bit smaller right there add a layer max to his picture and then i'm going to get rid of these sides like that so i just don't want him to be lying on there like that so i'll go into my resources and bring the third image which is this pasta also over here in fact a prophet okay so i'll position over here and then to check that they are almost on the same line I can use the grid lines over here to check so i'll select the profit press ctrl t and then i can transform him up a little bit so that they all be on the same line basically okay it doesn't really matter if they are not on the same line but apparently if they are it makes the work look way beautiful or kind of nice so i right click and rasterize this layer as well 
I can get rid of this guideline because I don't need it anymore. Add my layer max and then I'm going to paint off this side also. Now a few tips, you can just press Ctrl L to add levels to the image that you are working on. So if it looks too white, you can just drag the levels down a little bit and you can work on this one as well. So Ctrl L and then you activate the levels and then you can drag it to the right side a little bit and you are good to go. So once I'm done with these pictures, I can just group them and call those pictures over here. And then I can press Ctrl A to make sure that it is centered in the very middle of this. So basically, that's how I arrange my pictures. What do you think about the picture arrangement over here? Do let me know about your thoughts in the comment section. Okay, so for me, I'm going to press Ctrl T on the pictures and I'm going to resize it small like that. And then I'll try and make sure that they are positioned over here. So you can basically take your time to just do the transformations according to how you positioned your pictures, obviously. So next up, I'm going to add my test to these ones. Like I said, during the test time, I can try to be a bit faster so that I can get this tutorial done in a real quick time. So I'm going to pick my test tool and on top over here, I'm going to copy this one. So the Ghana Method is still continuing. So I'm going to choose the font, a vertical interact, and I'm going to increase the font size a little bit like that. First Ctrl T and then I'm going to center it so I can use Z and then zoom in so that you can see what I'm really doing and then you know remain in the dark. So I'll select the first state of the or the first line of the test and change the color to something like this. Okay. You can even increase it up over here so this is the hex code and then you click ok and then the second line i'm going to use this color that i have over here so there you have it and then you click ok and then you're good to go now right here i'm going to place the logo so let me just quickly add it before i just forget of it so i'll choose my rounded rectangle and draw a rounded rectangle over here so once I have my rounded rectangle, which I'm going to change the color by double clicking on the thumbnail over here. I'm going to change that to white and then go to my resources like that and bring my logos over there. So I basically place the logos over here and that will save me a lot of time. So I'm done with the logos. If you have two logos or three logos, you can just add all of them. That is pretty fine. And then I increase my test a little bit more like this. Next off, I'm going to duplicate the test. Excuse me if I'm running so fast because I really want to do the test real quick. So I'm going to edit this one and I'm going to paste or copy the present over here. Go back and paste it. And then I'm going to change the font type to Orata STD. Links to download this fonts will be in the description and if you want to know how to download and install fonts i'll link a video up in the card you can check it out so i take ok here and i'm done so right on top of this one we're going to create another test and then i'm going to copy this one right over here a three-day revival so i'll choose my test tool you can just use t for the shortcut and then i'm using the font called america so it will be in the description as well. And then I'm going to paste my test over there. Press Ctrl A and choose the color and I'm going to change the color. So I'll click OK from here and then I'm going to increase the size to be a very, very bold, like somewhere around 100 or 113, somewhere around that area. So I'll go to the toggle character over here and then I'm going to decrease the leading a little bit. So I'm just going to decrease it up, make sure that it is a bit closed and then I'll leave it over there. So I'll take over here and I'm done and I'll press Ctrl A to make sure that it is centered right there. Let me just put it here so that you can see what exactly I'm doing over there. So with the help of that, I'm going to zoom in, right click on this particular test and go to the blending options. So I have a gradient that I'm going to use. So the gradient is here and 
I go pick the gradient that I've already set. So when you scroll down here, you're going to find this particular gradient and these are the hex codes. So this is the first one. That one is here. You click OK and this is the second one that I used. It is right over here. And this is the third one. That one too is right over there. So if you want to copy it, you can just copy the hex code and you're good to go. So I click OK. OK and then I'm going to change this angle to zero. Basically, it is going to be on the horizontal instead of the vertical axis. So I'm going to add or drop a shadow to it. So a slight shadow right here will do. And then I'll click OK and I'm done with that of the reviver. So what I do next is I duplicate this test right over here and bring it down. And then I'm just going to edit that one to dab. So basically it's going to be dabbed over here. And I'll press Ctrl T to transform it and i'm going to position it right over here so it is going to read like revival a three-day revival dapped something like that so next off i'm going to duplicate the same dapped over here let me shift this one here slightly and i'm going to duplicate that by pressing ctrl g and i'll drag it over here so i'm going to change this one to a different test that is ignite and that is going to be the team for the program so i'm going to edit this one to ignite but i don't want to just type ignite so i'm going to type ig and then the night something i'll just give it a space and then the t so i'm going to change this font to trebuchet ms and like i told you all the links to this particular font will be in the description be sure to check them out so I'm going to press Ctrl T to transform this font here or this type test that I just did and then I will transform it like that till it gets to this point probably bring it down a little bit like this and then I make sure that it is in the middle like I always do then this space looks so big for me so I'll just try to close it up like that okay so next off I'll try and open it up a little bit more. Okay, so I'll go back to my resources and I have this flame over here. Basically, I just downloaded the flame and did a cutoff for you. So you are just good to use it like that. So I'm going to position it over here so that it will read like ignite. So instead of the eye over there, I believe you get the idea now, right? So that is why we left the space over there. So this is the ignite. This is what we have right over here and under here i'm just going to type in another test that is going to be this particular one over here fresh fire for service that is going to be also kind of the team or something a supporting scripture okay so i'm going to type over here fresh fire for service and that i'm going to use a font called acrobat and i'm going to use the bold over here drag it down a little bit and make sure that the color is somewhere related around this area so i just place this one over here and then you are good to go so you just take your time and then you position it right over there like that so right on top of here i'm going to draw a nice a very simple nice rectangle or i should say a cute rectangle so something small for the boys like this and then the color would also have to take something of this form and i'll press ctrl a to make sure that it is centered over here you can push it up a little bit like that and underneath of this ones are we going to write the date location and then the time so basically i'm going to copy this service fresh fire for service over here Press Ctrl A and make sure that it is centered right now. And then I'm going to select my date over here. So I'm just choosing the date that I did this video for it. I'll choose my rectangle tool and then I'll draw a nice rectangle over here. Something like white would do for me. Choose white and then I click OK. 
So when I'm done with the rectangle, what I do is I duplicate my 630 each time. Make sure that if the duplications are going to confuse you, you just have to anytime pick your test tool and then you do a writing. That's all. So I'll duplicate my time and then I'll make sure that it is on top of the rectangle. I'll slide it over here and since it is white, you can't see it. So you have to change the color to this particular color so that you can see it. And then I'll come and duplicate or copy this one. For more info, you paste it over here. So for any info, the person should just contact or give this number a contact. So basically, that is it. You have it over here. And your flyer is almost done. The only thing that is left here is the effect that we are going to add and the names of the pasta that we are going to add. And we are doing that really quickly. So the last thing that we're going to add to this one will be the effect and the effect I would want it under that of the revival that is the test. So basically it has to be on top of this one. So I'll go back to my resources and over here I've brought my lens flare. So I'm just going to bring it inside of Photoshop and place it over here. So I'll press Ctrl T and transform it over here. I want it somewhere around this place. Double click on it like that and then I'll right click, rasterize and go to the filter, go to blur and Gaussian blur and then I'm going to blur this out to about 38.7 and I'll click OK. Now I don't want the whole of this one over there so I'm just going to add a layer max to it and then I'm going to choose my brush and I'm going to print off the areas that I don't really want so I just print it off like that something as simple as this okay so this looks good the next one that i would want to add will be on top of the flame over here so i just look at the flame it is right over here this is the flame get it so i'll just go and bring another one the same one on top of it and i'll position it over here so kind of it is lighted so i right click and rasterize go to the blending mode and then i'm going to set this to screen so i have it over here but i don't want these ones around it so i'll add a layer max again and then i'm going to brush off these things that are around it so that only the flame will be left there and then you can take your time to position it right over here now the last thing that you're going to add is on top of the pictures or beneath of the pictures wherever you want to put them but that is going to be this particular lens flare over here and then i'll position it over there so i double click and right click rasterize and go to the blending mode change this one to screen and then i'm going to position it over here i open it up a little bit double click and then i go to filter blur and gaussian blur and then i'm going to blur this one out a little bit but not as much as that of the first one so we leave it like this and you click ok i'm going to duplicate that one by pressing ctrl j and then i'll position it over here try to open it up like that and then you are good to go so the last and final thing would have to be their names over here but then let's quickly make it just a slight one on this one we just we can just brush this off Basically, it depends on where you really want it to appear, like where you, the background, everything, what you really want to appear. So in this case, if you want this one to be showing the more, you can just take your time to do it just like that. So you see how it, it really works over here. So you can just get rid of basically all these parts, just that the shiny part must be there. Now to add their names, I just come on top of their pictures grab my test tool and over here i'm going to use a font called acrobat and i'm going to use the bold version decrease the font size a little bit like that and then i'll select the first test over here so the first test this is pasta lab and i'm going to copy that and paste it over here so if it's too big i'm just going to decrease it and change the font color decrease the size like this and I'm going to close the leading over here like that so this is going to be pasta lab and 
you can basically take your time to transform it a little bit like that just how big you, enough you want it to be i right click on it go to the blending options and i'm going to add a drop shadow to it and increase the size and i'll click ok here so i'll make a duplicate for it all right so basically that's it um any other thing that you want to add to this one will be at your own creativity level let me know about your thoughts about this particular video and be sure that more of church flyers will be coming out this particular year thank you so much for sticking around to watch please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to also check out the previous editions of the church flyers it might also be an interesting topic for you thank you so much and i'll see you guys in the next one it's innocent here and bye